I'd now like to ask Richard Lucas to ask a question. I'd like to take Patrick up on his comment. He said, when assessing this bill, he said, don't think about various scare stories and what might happen. He said, think about what's actually in the bill, the wording of the bill. So I'd like to read you what the bill says. Um, it says, assisted suicide will not be available to all those that the member would ideally wish it to include. Once it's been seen to operate effectively for a number of years, there may be an opportunity for further developments in the law that would offer hope to categories of people seeking assistance to die. So that's the text. So, that, so it's already conceding that there'll be, ex, it's, there'll be extensions to that in the future, or that it's raising the prospect of that. I'd like to invite Liam and Patrick to describe where they would draw the line in what we've, we've both described as a th slippery slope. Who would they exclude from assisted suicide? Which category of people would they exclude from it and on what principled grounds? Could I just double check, first of all, what the, the quote is that you're taking that from? It's paragraph it's, it's 54 not in the of the policy memorandum. It's the policy memorandum. It's the policy memorandum. Whereabouts, sorry? Paragraph 54, I think. Paragraph 54, 54. that's right. Yeah. Okay, this paragraph 54 of the policy memorandum, just for, for anyone who's not familiar with the process, when any bill is lodged in the Scottish Parliament, whether it's a member or a government bill, two documents are required. One is explanatory notes, one is a policy memorandum. Sometimes, most often, a third is required, which is a financial statement uh, about the impact on the Scottish Government's budget. Paragraph 54 of the policy memorandum is under a section headed alternative approaches. Now, this is required in a policy memorandum. A member is required to set out what are the other approaches that you could have taken uh, to the issue that your bill addresses and why have you not taken them. So the, the member putting forward this bill is required to, to set out what are the other approaches that could have been taken and why has, in this case, Margot decided not to take them. So the fact that Margot is discussing this in, in the policy memorandum is a perfectly normal procedural requirement. Uh, it's not something that's saying uh, kind of covertly, uh, we're, we're hoping to take this further, but we don't want to tell you. If, if that was the case, it wouldn't have been written down in the policy memorandum. This is simply a discussion uh, around the alternative approaches, and it is a requirement of the Scottish Parliament's processes that, uh, that Margot lodges, these, uh, lodges this aspect of the policy memorandum. My own uh, view is that I support the bill as it stands. The bill as it stands requires people to be over 16, it requires people to be registered as a patient in Scotland, it requires people uh, it, not for uh, making the initial declaration, Any, anyone can make an initial declaration. I could do that uh, not being someone who's, who's ill in any way at the moment, other than a touch of high blood pressure. I can let my GP know that if I was ever in that circumstances, I want them to know that I, in principle, support assisted suicide. But the, the second, third stages and the, the triggering of the facilitator uh, actually getting hold of the drug and uh, supplying it, not administering it, but giving assistance in it being administered, those are things that require somebody having had two steps at each stage, two medical practitioners to say that they are suffering either from a terminal illness or a life-shortening condition. Uh, I support those provisions. Uh, and if anybody wants to come up with a variant on that, I'll listen to their arguments. So the question I asked was whether there was a matter of principle that would draw the line somewhere in the slippery slope. And I think that question singularly has not been answered there. Well, well, we already know that you support the current bill. Well, I, I, was, I was asking, I was asking what, where, in the, what, where further on in the slippery slope, where can a principle line be drawn? I think that question hasn't been answered. Is there any group category of people who should be excluded uh, from assisted suicide side? I, th I think saying you haven't really thought about it yet. I, I don't think that's an adequate answer. That that's not reassuring. No, Is I, there a matter of principle? I, I've certainly uh, thought long and hard about this bill and about the principle underlying it. It's, it's a neat piece of uh, verbal tricksterism to, to ask where I would draw the line on a slippery slope. It's rather like, when did you stop beating your wife, that question, isn't it? Because if, if, if you accept the argument of a slippery slope, then it doesn't matter if there's a line drawn on it, it's still slippery. I don't accept the argument of a slippery slope. I accept the argument of parliamentary democracy, that parliaments should make a decision about what the law should be. There is no other way, legitimately, to make law in our society. 
And if in 20 years' time a, a future parliament, of which I'm highly unlikely still to be a member, uh, unless I'm very lucky and, and you know, not bored yet, uh, if a future parliament wanted to change this legislation uh, or sweep it away and, and go back to, to something much more restrictive, that is for that parliament to decide on the basis of its mandate. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Could, could I just clarify um, the nature of a slippery slope argument? A slippery slope argument is a logically valid argument. Uh, and I presented a logical slippery slope by saying a principle that's been stated has logical implications uh, that will follow. And the way a, slippery, a logical slippery slope argument must be refuted is you must bring in um, a matter of principle that will indicate where, once, where you can draw a line on the slippery slope. There's nothing wrong with slippery slope arguments. It's a valid argument form, and to refute it, you need to say, no, I can draw a line at this point with this matter of principle, therefore this one doesn't follow from this one for this reason. And I think that's what we haven't heard. Well, I can understand why you would like that to, to be possible. It, it's not possible. Le no, I, legislation I, doesn't I, work that way. Society doesn't work no, that we're, way. We're, we're, no sorry, parliament sorry. can pass legislation that binds a, a future one. <laughs>